Hello everyone, it's me, and I'm going to try to describe, through examples and through personal experience, what gender dysphoria really feels like. I tried to film this before, but I started getting emotional, so let's see if we can try again better this time without any of this happening. So, I'm just gonna jump right in here. Dysphoria feels like you're in the coldest, darkest prison cell all by yourself and you're isolated. You feel isolated, but you can still see everyone and you can still move around and tr do your best to live your life because it's very hard <laughs> to try and live your life when you're in this cage, this box, this prison cell, and everyone has a key, everyone has a key, and they can let you out for just a little while if they choose to, and if they don't, they're just kind of taunting you a little bit, they see you struggling, but they're like, you, you deserve to be in there, it's fine, you chose to be in there. It's not my fault. I have the key, but I don't need to use it because you're fine. You're fine in there. You don't you don't need to be let out. There's nothing wrong with being in there. This is a fine situation that you're in. You don't you don't need to be free. So, I'm just going to keep you in there. And sometimes people fumble with the keys, but they still let you out. They do their best to let you out anyway. Some people let you out without even thinking about it. And some people, w like, they don't even see the cage, they just see you because they let you out. It's so, it's so common for them to let you out that they just, it's just a part of it. It's just a part of them being near you and acknowledging you that they're just like, okay. And what I'm trying to describe here is misgendering because sometimes people struggle to get your gender right but they still try their hardest some people never misgender you never they call you the name you want to be called they really care about how you want to feel and other people do not care at all or they say they care but they don't do anything to help you I have, a, I have people that fit into many categories, many of the categories in life. <sighs> many people want to see you struggle, or they just don't think you're struggling at all. They just ignore you. And other people, they can't imagine misgendering you. They can't imagine calling you something else, because th to them, you are that. You are who you say you are. They take you at face value. I'm going to talk about good days, neutral days, and bad days. On good days, you never feel comfortable in your skin. In any of these. In any of these scenarios, you're still dealing with feeling wrong. But on good days, you can still imagine the future. You think, I can wait like this a little longer transition and this is fine as I know that there is a light at the, the end of the tunnel I can see it I can feel it and I can wait for it because I know it's there and on neutral days it's harder to see the future maybe I can look about a week ahead on neutral days and I can feel like I can make it through the week I think. I think I can make it through the week. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I will do my best. That's a neutral day. <sighs> Bad days. I don't want to get up. I don't want to be seen. 
I wear my binder longer than I should, even if I'm home alone. People get concerned because I act differently. I scare people. I scare myself. And lately, I've been having a lot of bad days. But I've made it through them. Because I try really, really hard <laughs> to think about how I feel on the good days. I don't want this to be a sad video though. So I'm going to try to think of other examples. <sighs> Gender dysphoria. It feels like I can't be myself until I transition, like, not just be body-wise, but personality-wise. Like, I have to push down the femininity until I start transitioning and looking male. Otherwise, my identity is invalid, and even then I feel like after I transition, if I do anything feminine, people are going to think that I was lying, or that I want to detransition. And as far as I can see, that's not going to be the case. I really aspire to transitioning. I'm I'm only about six months away now. I've made it through another month of school and being alive and dealing with gender dysphoria. This awful fucking dysphoria. But I've dealt with it. I've survived through help, through friends. I haven't sought out any professional help yet even though I really should, but that, 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 that maybe next week. I know I say, I say that like every week to myself, but I'm feeling like I'm getting to the point where I might just actually go to therapy because it, it could help. And the closer I get to actual therapy, the closer I get to gender therapy, and if I get gender therapy by like, February, I can probably start transitioning in the summer, so I'm looking forward to that. Today's a pretty good day. I'm looking forward. I'm looking up. I thought I would make this video to help because I want I want people to understand what it's like that like when people are saying they're feeling dysphoric, it's not it's not a lie. And they shouldn't believe it's a lie. Like, take someone at face value. If they say they're trans and they say they're having a dysphoric day or they don't feel good, help them. Compliment them. Say, like, oh, you look really masculine today or you look really pretty and feminine today. and Like, compliment them on the gender that they are trying to portray, that they are trying to express, that they feel that they are. Try very hard to get their gender right. Try very, very hard to get their name right. Do your best. That's what counts. I know I appreciate it when people try. I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate anyone who's watching this video. And no more sadness. No more, no more tears. No more. Have... Have a good day.